Hi guys, this is Karthik from Cap with Simplified. Recently, we were trying to analyze who is visiting our YouTube channel and who is visiting our website. And a very interesting insight came out. There were very, very few people who were actually about the age of 34 who were watching our videos and watching our website's uh, articles. Now, naturally, we were all confused because in the applicant pool applying to DDS programs in the US, there are a good number of candidates almost 20% of them who are above the age of 34, who are not fresh graduates, coming with a lot of experience. And yet, this very experienced and very eligible talent pool is not applying to the US. When we were investigating this, at the same time, we got a lot of calls from people who are in their early 40s, in their late 40s, and so on. And they asked us the question, Karthik, I'm pretty old. I'm probably the age of your mom. Can I get into dental school at this age, isn't it very difficult? Do I have an easy option to come, in, to come into the US? They had different reasons behind these calls. Maybe their children had recently got a green card or their parents had got a green card and they wanted to move. Maybe they just wanted a better lifestyle compared to what they were earning in India amidst the difficult situation and corruption and so on. Maybe they wanted a break from running a private practice which is a very lucrative option back in their home country and want to get into just working as an employee in a corporate dental practice, which pays almost even better than what they would do in their home country. So for multiple reasons, they make this life decision and choice to actually transplant themselves from their home country and come to the US. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about a simple framework that you can use if you are in this age group and are considering coming to the US. We would like to call this ACE. Noura and I coined this term when we were helping different candidates above the age of 34 get into school and actually convince the admissions committee at interviews. ACE stands for adaptability, continuous learning, and experiential leverage. I'm gonna talk about each in a borderline. First, adaptability. It's very important. You don't say, I have done this, I have achieved this, I have completed this, I have so many C credits, I have so many research papers and so on. Instead of the I have, you should rephrase yourself and say I can. Now, because I've completed this, I believe I can, even at this point, adapt to something completely new. Because I've done this, I can adapt and learn something completely new, like a US protocol, like interacting with a patient who has a different dialect or a different uh, way of speaking English. You need to talk about very simple examples that an admissions committee relates to. Now, most people in the admissions committee might be around the age group of 45 to 60. So they can relate with you in certain examples that you can quote based on your age and experience. For a, let's say, let's take one example. You can say, my child came and taught me how to use the TikTok app recently. And guess what? Within a month, I became a whiz. By giving that example, that, which they can relate to themselves because they might have been going through the same process thanks to their millennial grandchildren or their new pet in the family, you can talk about these connectable adaptations that someone has to go through at a later age in their life when they've established their career. By talking about this adaptability situations, you can actually make an impact and say, if I can do it for TikTok, I can do it for dentistry, which is right at my heart. The next idea is the idea of continuous learning. Now you might have heard of this word Kaizen, which stands for continuous learning in Japanese. The continuous learning is different from academic learning. It talks about this idea where every experience is something that is incremental and something that you can build upon. They say experience reinforces learning, but experiences can also be the area where you begin learning. The difference between experience as reinforcement and experience as a beginning is the difference in how you interpret experience. Was it the starting point for curious curiosity or was it the ending point finale of an achievement? When you talk about your experiences in an interview, do not say after this great long arduous period, I learned what it really takes to complete this. Instead say it is the beginning after this long arduous experience, I began embracing new patient culture in my clinic. 
I began understanding why it was important to let my millennial patients bring their pets into the clinic. I began to understand what it means to adapt digital ways of technology to interact with my patients outside the clinic. You get it what I'm saying? You need to talk about your experiences as a beginning rather than an end, rather than an achievement. That will bring the idea of continuous learning, a big impact in your interviews. The third and the final idea is called experiential leverage. Everyone who has completed a certain number of years in dentistry, maybe 10, 15, 20 years, has a lot of experience with them. Their experience might have so many aspects to it, but one aspect that definitely stands out for you in your life is the ability or the chance that you have gone through multiple failures. Many young people aren't very fortunate to go through multiple failures just because they have not seen life for as long. Maybe because they went after a life of security and instant gratification. But you might have made choices to take risks and failed. You might have also had the opportunity to have trained somebody else and embraced them into accepting failure and taking risks to move on to the next stage in your life. This is an experience that only you have and nobody else has. Try to leverage that by telling. When you come to a classroom, you're bringing this experiential leverage in helping your fellow classmates, including the local students, think about dentistry very differently. How can they t learn from your experiences and take risks in their own life? How can they make the choice between whether to go to a private practice or a corporate dental clinic? How can they make the choice on whether to pursue a residency immediately or later in their life? How can they make the choice to whether to go to a city or a backward underserved community and earn equal wages? They can make these choices not by Googling or by researching somewhere, but by speaking to you. That is experiential leverage. It's important to note that the, word, the way I phrased this word was to call it experiential leverage and not experiential baggage. By changing the tone in the way you play your words, you're going to make a big impact. Finally, in conclusion, the framework we set was ACE, A-C-E. A for adaptability, C for continuous learning, and E for experiential leverage. With this technique, we have helped people in the past who are above the age of 34 actually easily get into school. We're going to have a very special video with a doctor who got into UCSF, a school that probably favors people with less experience than our fresh graduates get in after starting his own private practice in India with his wife. Hopefully more of these videos will convince you to come to our channel, learn from us and get into school. Thank you so much. Capit Simplified grows up on your shoulders and we would love to keep going that way.